today is Saturday, October 15th, 2016, New Zealand time. And this is a follow-up to our live YouTube Hangout with Astronomy Live and Nibiru Planet X 2016, uh, discussing a video by Nibiru Planet X 2016. Now, it's been quite an interesting 24 hours and uh, the events since last night. Um, I received a message from Scott from Nibiru Planet X 2016, which I will just call Nibiru News or Scott. And he was most upset and I'm going to uh, share my screen. So Scott sent me this message to say that he woke up at about 15 minutes ago and received an email from a gentleman who is a professional astronomer and astrophysicist and professor at the University of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he is also the head of the Greater Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Astronomy Club. Scott goes on to say, I decided to contact this man and ask him for a little help. He goes on to say, and when I woke up this morning, he answered my reply with a 13 page PDF file and is willing to join me and that little prick Scott from Astrology Astronomy Live in a hangout debate. He also goes on to say, now, if, if you want, I would love to arrange this hangout meeting with this professional astronomer and astrophysicist uh, who is a professor at the University of Pittsburgh and the other gentleman is the head of Greater Pittsburgh Astronomy Association. They told me that Scott's report on the moon orbiting the sun and that coronal image was absolutely idiotic. Now, Scott also sent me a couple of screenshots of the contact details of these two gentlemen. And uh, I subsequently contacted, I've sent emails to both of these gentlemen. And one of them, the first one, who is Professor Adam Leibovich, uh, has replied. So I'm just going to go right down the bottom here, where here is my email to Professor Dr. Adam Leibovich and Dr. Robert Devati. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I outlined the situation with Scott and the, the background with it and, um, and sent him the information that Scott had sent through to me in that message. And in short, the reply from Professor Leibovich was, I certainly did not have any contact with this person, Adam. So there's something going on behind the scenes. And what I suspect is what I said all along. And Scott from Nibiru Planet X 2016 seems to be being played by somebody. Now we have our suspicions, but we yet have to prove what's going on. Now I sent another message to Scott. If I scroll down from the top, you can see that there was quite a bit of keyboard rage that was going on from Scott. And uh, anyway, all through, I kept responding to him and saying that yes, we would be quite happy to engage in a live hangout as we did before. You can bring these gentlemen uh, into the hangout uh, who claim to be a professor and so forth. And we absolutely stand by everything that we say. And if there's anything wrong that, that, that we've said, then we're happy to be corrected. So we're more than happy to be transparent and front up to a hangout. And um, I would like to read now an open letter that I've sent to Scott because he has not been replying to my emails or messages via Facebook. So this is now an open letter to Scott Nibiru Planet X 2016. Scott, it is a shame that you didn't simply come back and talk to me and Scott like a gentleman as we did before. Instead of running off half cocked and getting your facts wrong about this, I'm always willing to meet people halfway when I believe they are sincere. But if you're not willing to do this and communicate as before, I will have no problem going head to head with you publicly via videos. The stories that you've been telling me do not add up and I have been in contact with Professor Leibovich, and he says that he has had no contact with you. I can send you the emails. You have failed to provide me with any evidence to back up what you have claimed. You have not forwarded the emails to me and you have not sent the 13 page PDF you claim you were sent. I said that I am always willing to give you an opinion and that offer still stands. My hope is that if you are being honest about the claims you have made about being sent info, etc., you will see that you have been played and will want to do your best to expose whoever is behind that disinfo that you have been sent. With regard to your latest video, which I consider to be serious fear mongering, you are doing exactly the sort of thing now that led to the suicide death of that young lady. By posting this type of video, you are risking the lives of vulnerable and fragile people. Do you really want their lives on your conscience? What will you say to me in another six months or years time 
when I come back to you and ask you why we are still waiting for these dire events you describe in your video to take place. Remember, I have been seeing and debunking videos like this for years now and have yet to see the events described in those videos take place. And I fully expect yours to be no different to all the others. I am still open to trying to get to the bottom of this with you, but you must meet me halfway to do that. David. Now, I've got Astronomy Live back with me, who is uh, joining the Hangout, and we're going to discuss this uh, further. Uh, over to you, Astronomy Live. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for having me uh, back on. Uh, so here are the images from Stereo Behind Core 2 that started all of this. And these are from February 2007, when the spacecraft was pretty much freshly launched and on its way out of the Earth-Moon system. And after receiving a gravity assist from the Moon, about one month later, as the Moon came back around again, it passed through uh, the Core 2 images and the Core 1 images before actually passing in front of the Sun and then passing it back out the other side. So you're going to see the, the Moon emerge in the bottom right corner and come up and take this arcing path and it comes up to the coronagraph's central obscuring disk and passes through the other side. And that's that. Now, the, those images were at three-hour intervals. I rendered images in ORSA, which is a program which calculates uh, the motion of the solar system and accounts for the gravity of the planets and the moon on various objects, including, for example, the stereo behind spacecraft, which I put into the program. And it experienced the same uh, gravity assist from the moon, and then one month later, it saw the same thing. So the white outline is the edge of the field of view of the core two being simulated here, passes in front of the sun, and falls the same path as it goes out. Now, let me show you just once more the top down view for what's going on here. So initially, right there at the start, you saw these two points uh, very close together, stereo behind getting a gravity assist from the moon. And then it proceeds outward. And over time, you can see its orbit relative to Earth is uh, changing under the influence of the moon's gravity. And then as it gets further and further away from the Earth, Earth's gravity starts to uh, become less and less significant compared to the gravity of the Sun and the other planets, and eventually it breaks free of Earth's gravity. The Moon's still traveling around here, moving around the Earth in its orbit, and when it comes back around to the other side, you'll notice up here in the top left, the date is indeed February 2007, and that's when we get that transit occurring. So at this point, stereo behind is now much farther from the Moon and Earth than say an observer standing on Earth is from the moon or a satellite orbiting Earth, even in a geostationary orbit, uh, would be relative to the moon. It's now several lunar distances away. And uh, that's why the moon's apparent size, when it actually crossed the sun, you can see here's the disk of the moon versus the apparent size of the sun. And it is smaller than, much smaller than the sun in this case, because it's much farther from uh, the moon than we experience here on Earth's surface or satellites in Earth orbit experience. Uh, this satellite was much farther from Earth than any of our other uh, satellites normally are, uh, whether you're talking geostationary satellites or satellites in what they call a uh, Molnia style orbit. Of, it's a Russian uh, designed orbit to, to put communication satellite in, in, in a uh, elliptical orbit that has them hovering over a particular portion of Earth for uh, an extended period of time. Even in those cases, you do not have this kind of massive distance between uh, the object or the satellite and the moon. So that's why it's so much smaller uh, than we normally experience here on Earth's surface. But it's still a, a significant enough disk that you can see. Uh, you can see its angular size. It's, it's large enough to be resolved in the extreme UV images seen here, as well as the core 2 and core 1 images seen in the more recent videos. Let's see. Just once more, there it is, and you can see it's a nice little black circle. It is smaller than the sun, but it's still large enough to be resolved by core two. And indeed, the size and position of it match very well with the images from Orsa. So if I overlay one on top of the other and play them together, you can see the ghost outline of the moon predicted by Orsa and the actual image of the moon seen in core two. And it follows the exact same path and it's the exact same size. So it matches exactly where the moon should be. To me, this raises two questions for anyone claiming that this is not the moon. First question is, where's the moon? If that's not the moon, where is it? It should be right around there. Uh, the second question, of course, would be, uh, if, that's, if that's not the moon, then what the heck is it, and why is it traveling exactly where the moon is expected to be? Uh, so I know that... Uh, Scott over at uh, Nibiru News, Nib Nibiru Planet X 2016, that channel, 
uh, claims to have a large PDF file, uh, which was created apparently in response to my video addressing this. I'm eager to see it. I'd love to see it. I'm happy to walk through the math on it and uh, show you guys how, how to do this. And, and uh, if they claim that there's math that shows that this is wrong, then let's see it because uh, that's either that's either going to be, it's either going to have to explain the answer to both those questions or it's false. There's something wrong with the map. And uh, I'm 100% confident that if there is such a document, then the math is wrong. And uh, it wouldn't be the first time that, uh, you know, a large authoritative looking document has been produced claiming to prove one of my videos wrong. We experienced this last month with uh, the SDO eclipse season. I made a successful mathematical prediction about the end of that eclipse season, uh, in spite of documents that claim to prove that it's mathematically impossible for it to have been due to SDO's orbit. Now, we're in a situation where there's, uh, you know, the claim that there's a document out there with equations and diagrams and figures showing that this couldn't possibly be the moon, but ORSA says otherwise, and ORSA is not, you know, it's not a NASA program. This is a program you can go and download yourself and run on your own home computer. And, uh, Daz, if you want, I'll send you the link, and you, include, you can include the link to the software in your video description. It's a free software. I highly recommend running it in Linux. It's much more stable in Linux than Windows, but Linux is also free. So if, you, if you're if you so inclined, you can go get Linux, and you can go get Orsa, and test this for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Right. Thank you, Astronomy Live. Um, now, when I was uh, having this exchange with Scott from Nebru News last night, I did ask him what date in 2007 this event took place? Because to be quite honest, I didn't even take any notice of what the date was. I knew it was in 2007, and I was satisfied that it was the moon because the video is already out there. It's, it's already been proven that it was the moon. So I asked him, what date was this in 2007? And he came back straight away, and he, he said to me, it was in February 2007. I think he even gave me the date. Before he even came back with the answer, I had Googled moon and stereo behind 2007 and here are the results that came back and the very first one that we click on takes us to the science at nasa uh, web page and once that's loaded stereo eclipse the article is dated march the 12th 2007 but it says here that on february 25th 2007 nasa scientists were calibrating some cameras aboard stereo b spacecraft and they pointed the instruments at the sun and here is what they saw and there it is and what is it? It is the moon passing in front of the sun, exactly as we have been saying. Okay. Um, the black disc is the moon, it says here. We caught a lunar transit of the sun, she explains. All the links are there. If anyone wants to check them out, just Google moon and stereo behind 2007 or something similar to that. And you can find all of the details and the images and so forth, confirming what Astronomy Live and I have been saying all along. Now, I've challenged Nibiru News to uh, bring these two gentlemen that he claims to have been in contact with into a live hangout, and we will discuss their claims, because I know for a fact that they are not who Nibiru News claims that they are. Now, I believe that Scott from Nibiru News was being very sincere in our hangouts. I like to think that he is being honest with me. I can't be certain if he's been honest with me when he won't come forward and talk to me as I've asked him to. Remember my open letter to him that I read out at the beginning of this video? It still stands. Scott, come forward and talk to me. Present your evidence. Um, you claim that you've been talking to Professor Leibovich. He says that he has not spoken to you. So let's find out who you have been talking to, if you have indeed been talking to anyone. Send me the 13-page PDF that you claim that you were sent and let's investigate the information because there is certainly some disinformation going on, but it's not coming from Astronomy Live and it's certainly not coming from me. Astronomy Live, back to you. There's certainly something suspicious going on here and uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't doubt the claim uh, in, terms, in terms of there being a 13 page or some large PDF document out there somewhere claiming that this is not the mood. It would not surprise me uh, because we have seen a number of other PDFs making similar claims in the last uh, month or two. At least I've seen that on other channels, uh, related channels, uh, that have been interfacing with WSO. And I'm not saying that this is WSO behind it or Chris Potter or any particular person. I don't know who's behind it, but there's some something going on. And uh, these these documents claim to be scientific, you know, papers coming from an actual physicist. And now, according to uh, Nibiru News, we have 
an actual name to put with that. Uh, and this person, you know, the, Gaz, you contacted the, the two professors in question. One of them has already replied and denied having any contact with this person. So it wouldn't surprise me if there's somebody, you know, doing doing un, un, dishonest deeds behind the scenes, claiming to be someone they're not, and, and claiming to produce these scientific papers or papers that are actually uh, filled with nonsense. Unfortunately, you know, it's very difficult for most people to do the math themselves and uh, work through these equations and find out who's really telling the truth. But um, when you when you do the math and it matches up with these observations, or, and when you run these, uh, you know, when you run the trajectory through ORSA or some other similar program that accounts for the gravity of the planets, and it ends up matching the actual images, and you overlay them, and it's a perfect match, that says that something's going right, not something's going wrong. So that sets a pretty high bar for evidence. And we have yet to see this evidence that claims to disprove it. So let's see the evidence. All we're asking Nibiru News to do is come forth and bring that evidence and let's take a look at it together. Um, you know, I, I did my presentation on the SDO clip season and I went through the paper that was presented to the extent that it was presented and um, showed where it was making mistakes, where it was wrong. And, you know, we can have that discussion. So uh, let's do it. Let's let's have that discussion. Let's see the paper and let's go through it and let's see if it has any merit. Uh, I presented my evidence and that's all we have to go on at the moment. Occam's razor says it's the moon. Back to you, Dazm. Right. And uh, just to confirm what I said about uh, the email. OK, so this is the screenshot of the reply from Professor uh, Adam Leibovich to me through my uh, email. I certainly did not have any contact with this person signed Adam. There's certainly something going on behind the scenes and we need to get to the bottom of this. And the, the other thing that I would like to uh, bring out in this is that the latest video by Nibiru Planet X 2016 includes an executive order uh, from the White House. So this is the executive order coordinating efforts to prepare the nation for space weather events. And this was published on October 13th, 2016. And Nibiru News has made a big deal about this executive order, coordinating efforts to prepare the nation for space weather events. And we'll post the link to that. You can read it online. It's all public. Um, all the details are there. You can scroll through it, pick it to, to bits and so on. And um, now, this is the question. First of all, we know that we do get uh, solar flares from the sun. Uh, this happens very regularly. And there is always the possibility that we could be hit with a major CME, as happened back in, I think it was 1859, if I remember correctly, the Carrington event. And if we had the same type of CME solar flare that hit in 1859, it would do serious damage to our power grids and communication grids. And similar things have happened to a lesser extent. I recall that there was another major solar flare in 1989 that took out power grids in North America. And all this is about, this executive order, is about being prepared. But heaven forbid that the government would, should want to be prepared in case of the event of something like this happening, so that our power systems and communication systems wouldn't be taken out. But oh no, this has to be blown out of all proportion, as if something is about to happen next week. Astronomy Live, your comments? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's necessary and reasonable precautions that honestly should have been done a long time ago because we've known about the Carrington event since we had the telegraph around. And the not March 1989 geomagnetic storm uh, was another warning sign. And we had another warning sign in 2012, just four years ago. There was a, what, was, what is suspected to have been a Carrington class uh, solar event, but it missed Earth. Fortunately, it was not pointed in the direction that was facing Earth, and so we dodged the bullet. Um, and so these storms are serious. It's something we need to be uh, proactive about as a society. And, um, you know, I, I hope that uh, by the time it does happen, because eventually it will happen again, and Earth will get hit again by one of these, uh, hopefully by then we'll have taken the necessary precautions to harden our infrastructure against it. Um, it is a vulnerability, but it's, it's uh, you know, it's not... It's not like it's going to happen next week, as you said. The sun's not exactly in a uh, super active state at the moment. It will get there again. You know, every solar maximum, there's the potential for this to happen. Uh, you know, if it happened in 2012 but missed us, it could happen next time and hit us. But it's not something to panic about and start building bomb shelters for 
and all of this. That's not the the proper reaction, but that's you know that's the reaction that some people want you to have, um, and you know it, it's it's beneficial to some people to sell you supplies and survival gear and all the rest of it uh, to try to prepare you for something that may not even happen in your lifetime, um, and that's not even. Like I said, it's not even really the, the proper response. The proper response is to call for action to harden the infrastructure against it so that when it does happen again, it doesn't knock out everything that we have, our GPS satellites, our, our electrical grid, all of it. You know, We just need to take the proper precautions to harden the infrastructure so that it can withstand uh, more powerful solar storms. Right. Now, as I discussed with Scott from Nibiru News, Planet X 2016, I shared with him the story about the teenage girl a uh, 16-year-old schoolgirl from the UK, her name was Isabel Taylor, who committed suicide in the lead-up to the 2012 uh, predictions. Um, this is one of the many uh, articles. As much as I don't like the Daily Mail website, I prefer to use this one because it does have a nice picture of Isabel Taylor so that we can see that, yes, she was a real person. She's not just a, a faceless name in an article. She was a 16-year-old schoolgirl who hanged herself because she could not face her fears about the predictions for the coming doomsday of 2012, which of course never eventuated. And the sort of thing that we see in Nibiru Planet X 2016, latest video about this um, executive order from the White House is exactly the sort of video that can lead to uh, suicides and people harming themselves out of their fear over these claims. It is irresponsible and it is dangerous. And as I said to Scott in my open letter to him, does he really want suicides on his conscience? I certainly wouldn't want that on my conscience. This is nonsense, and I stand by my words, and in another six months or 12 months or whenever, I'm saying that we'll be looking back at this video here and saying, so what happened? Because, okay, a solar flare could happen any time, but it's more likely that this is not going to happen. It hasn't, hasn't happened in the last year or last five years to the extent that we're talking about here with an executive order from the White House. Yes, we do get solar flares from time to time, but not to the extent that we're talking about in this video. It is irresponsible, it is dangerous, and it could cost lives. And I hope, Scott, that you will consider what you are presenting in your videos. You have a following of almost 30,000 subscribers, and your videos are well viewed. And as we can see from the comments under your videos, that people really do soak up this information. They, they run with it. They believe it. And you are causing a lot of unnecessary fear and anxiety. So I hope that you will want to get to the bottom of this, Scott, and find out who is sending you this information. Present it openly and honestly. Astronomy Live and I both believe in open, honest, balanced, transparent reporting. And we are more than happy to engage in another live hangout with you and uh, anyone else that you might want to bring in uh, to discuss these claims. Astronomy Live? Yeah, um, and we'll be completely civil just as we were before. We had a nice conversation before as gentlemen, and I, I don't see why we can't do that again. Um, and you know, the concern about these these videos that stir up people's fears, it's not easy. It, it, it's of course concerning that they might physically harm themselves, but harm can even go beyond physical harm. Uh, and and really disrupt people's lives in ways that aren't always as obvious as someone hanging themselves. Uh, an example I would give from my own personal experiences, I knew a couple who were uh, a very close family, and they were on the verge of uprooting their entire family, their kids, and uh, moving out of state. I'm, I live in Florida, um, relatively close to uh, the water, and you know, it, the concern they had was that Comet Ellen in, in 2011 was going to uh, cause tidal waves to wash over Florida and wipe us out. And you know there were videos claiming that Ellen was secretly a brown dwarf that NASA was hiding, or it was hiding a brown dwarf behind it, et cetera. And this family was actually uh, ingesting that fear, uh, those fear videos, and becoming concerned enough to the point that they were uh, coming to me because they were on the verge of taking action. By taking action, I mean uprooting their family uh, from Florida and leaving, not because they had good job prospects or anything like that, but just trying to get out of Dodge because they were scared for their lives. Um, and they came to me for uh, guidance because they knew I was an amateur astronomer. They knew I knew a lot about the subject. And so uh, they knew me personally and they trusted me and I was able to put their fears to rest, thankfully. But that's not always the case. Uh, not everyone 
knows personally, you know, a serious amateur astronomer who can do that for them. Um, so I would say two things. First of all, videos like that are irresponsible, not only because they can tip potentially suicidal people over the edge, but because they can also disrupt lives in, in ways the person who's disrupted may not even initially uh, perceive or anticipate. Um, and the other thing I would say uh, is that, you know, if you're someone who, who is concerned by issues like this, who is worried that there's, you know, a secret brown dwarf or Nibiru is coming and, and going to damage Earth and, and potentially hurt you, go seek out your local astronomy club. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to take the word of an anonymous person on the internet, whether it's, whether it's Nibiru News or whether it's us. There are experts out there who know a lot about these subjects that you can find in your local communities uh, all across the United States. I, I, I can't speak for every country, but here in the U.S., that we're littered with great astronomy clubs. There, there are, you know, anywhere you go that has a uh, either a major area or a major dark sky area, you're going to potentially find a, a, an astronomy club. And there's websites on, on the internet you can you can use to search for the nearest astronomy club. Go seek that out and go to attend a meeting and ask people. Uh, you can ask them yourselves, and, and they'll be happy to show you views through their telescopes and what they can see with their equipment and help you, you know, get over these fears because uh, this this is being driven by a lot of misunderstandings and. Uh, my hope is that people will educate themselves on the subject to vaccinate themselves against misinformation like this. Uh, I think Sagan was the one who talked about having a critical thinking toolkit that you can use to analyze claims and determine what's true and what's false. And um, perhaps the easiest way to, to start to gain that kind of toolkit in astronomy is to seek out an astronomy club where there are already people there who know a lot about the subject and, and can help you on your way. Thank you, Astronomy Live. That sounds like very good advice. And uh, again, I would just like to reach out to Scott from Nibiru Planet X 2016. Uh, we did have a, a couple of very good discussions uh, on Skype and also the, uh, the Hangout. You were a gentleman when you joined us and we felt that we had made a, a good connection there. Obviously, I'm disturbed by the recent events, the messages that were sent and the video that's been uploaded since. But as I say, I'm always willing to meet somebody halfway when I believe that they are sincere. So if you're willing to come back to us with the information, uh, talk about it openly, we would be pleased to host you with another live hangout where you can present the information and bring in any of your experts that you uh, choose to bring in, and we will discuss those claims. Thank you for, for joining us, and thank you for strumming me live once again, and uh, we'll keep you posted on this. Thank you for watching. Hello YouTube, this is Daz of the Cameraman. Today is Saturday, October 15th, 2016, New Zealand time. And this is a follow-up to our live YouTube hangout with Astronomy Live and Nibiru Planet X 2016, uh, discussing a video by Nibiru Planet X 2016. Now, it's been quite an interesting 24 hours and uh, the events since last night. Um, I received a message from Scott from Nibiru Planet X 2016, which I will just call Nibiru News, or Scott. And he was most upset, and I'm going to uh, share my screen. So Scott sent me this message to say that he woke up at about 15 minutes ago and received an email from a gentleman who is a professional astronomer and astrophysicist and professor at the University of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he is also the head of the Greater Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Astronomy Club. Scott goes on to say, I decided to contact this man and ask him for a little help. He goes on to say, and when I woke up this morning, he answered my reply with a 13 page PDF file and is willing to join me and that little prick Scott from Astrology Astronomy Live in a hangout debate. He also goes on to say, now if, if you want, I would love to arrange this hangout meeting with this professional astronomer and astrophysicist uh, who is a professor at the University of Pittsburgh and the other gentleman is the head of Greater Pittsburgh Astronomy Association. They told me that Scott's report on the moon orbiting the sun and that coronal image was absolutely idiotic. Now, Scott also sent me a couple of screenshots of the contact details of these two gentlemen. And uh, I subsequently contacted, I've sent emails to both of these gentlemen. And one of them, the first one, who is Professor Adam Leibovich, uh, has replied. So I'm just going to go right down the bottom here, where here is my email to Professor Dr. Adam Leibovitz and Dr. Robert Devati, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I outlined the situation with Scott and the, the background with it. And um, 
and sent him the information that Scott had sent through to me in that message. And in short, the reply from Professor Leibovich was, I certainly did not have any contact with this person, Adam. So there's something going on behind the scenes, and what I suspect is what I said all along. And Scott from Nibiru Planet X 2016 seems to be being played by somebody. Now we have our suspicions, but we yet have to prove what's going on. Now I sent another message to Scott. If I scroll down from the top, you can see that there was quite a bit of keyboard rage that was going on from Scott. And uh, anyway, all through, I kept responding to him and saying that yes, we would be quite happy to engage in a live hangout as we did before. You can bring these gentlemen uh, into the hangout uh, who claim to be a professor and so forth. And we absolutely stand by everything that we say. And if there's anything wrong that, that, that we've said, then we're happy to be corrected. So we're more than happy to be transparent and front up to a hangout. And um, I would like to read now an open letter that I've sent to Scott because he has not been replying to my emails or messages via Facebook. So this is now an open letter to Scott Nibiru Planet X 2016. Scott, it is a shame that you didn't simply come back and talk to me and Scott like a gentleman as we did before. Instead of running off half cocked and getting your facts wrong about this, I'm always willing to meet people halfway when I believe they are sincere. But if you're not willing to do this and communicate as before, I will have no problem going head to head with you publicly via videos. The stories that you've been telling me do not add up and I have been in contact with Professor Leibovich and he says that he has had no contact with you. I can send you the emails. You have failed to provide me with any evidence to back up what you